Kashakalpena Dharman Yoga Ganopaman Pinyaya Bhinena Sang Buddhas Tang Vande Dvipadang Varam I bow down to the one who is the chief among all persons, who has known fully the souls resembling infinite sky through his knowledge that is comparable to space and is non different from the object of knowledge. This first verse is meant as a salutation to the promulgator of the school of non-duality by identifying him with non-duality itself. For it is desirable to worship one's teacher at the commencement of a scripture so that its aim may be achieved. Akashakalpa is that which is slightly different from space, that is to say, resembling space. Akasha, space, contains within it elements of inert matter. Therefore, it is slightly different from knowledge, which is all sentiency. The analogy is made with reference to the all-pervading characteristic of Akasha, which is similar to Jnana, or knowledge. So, Jnanena Akasha Kalpena means by a knowledge that is comparable to infinite space. What purpose is served by it? He knows dharma, the souls. The word dharma literally means attribute. According to Vedanta, attribute is non-different from a real substance. Hence, dharma also is non-different from Brahman. The word dharma in the texts is synonymous with knowledge, or jnanam. In this text, Gaudapada uses dharma to mean jiva, or embodied being. Jiva is identical with knowledge, or consciousness, Brahman. The jiva, as Brahman, is in reality as all-pervading as the akasha, or jnanam. The plural number is used on account of the apparent plurality of jivas, which is admitted from the empirical standpoint. Souls of what kind? The souls that are gagana upaman, comparable to the sky. There is another qualification of that very knowledge, the knowledge that is nyeabhinna, non-different from the objects of knowledge, that is to say, the souls, just as heat is non-different from fire, or light is non-different from the sun. From the standpoints of fire and the sun, heat and light are identical with themselves. Similarly, on the platform of non-duality, the knower, knowledge, and the object of knowledge are identical and denote the same reality. If knowledge is intrinsically separate from its object, that is, the jiva or brahman, then one can never actually know the nature of jiva or brahman by such separate knowledge. He who sangbuddha has completely realized dharman gaganopaman, the entities that are comparable to the sky, nyeyabhinnena jnanena, through the knowledge that is non-different from the object of knowledge, that is comparable to space and is non-different from the self that is to be known. He indeed is the Lord called Narayana, who by knowledge, non-different from the nature of Atman, the object of knowledge, and which resembles Akasha, knew the dharmas which again may be compared to Akasha. In ancient times, Gaudapada retired to Ashram in the interior of the Himalayas, and there worshipped the human figure of the Almighty Lord with great austerity. Tamvande, him I salute, Dvipadanvaram, the best among the bipeds, that is to say, 
the supreme person among all persons that are suggested by the word biped. Under the garb of this salutation to the teacher, it is suggested that the purpose of this chapter is to establish, through a refutation of the opposite views, the philosophy of the supreme reality that is devoid of the distinctions of knowledge, knowable, and knower. Asparsha yogo vai nama sarva sattva sukohitaha avivado virudhascha deshitas tang namamyaham. I bow down to that yoga that is well known as free from relationships, joyful to all beings, beneficial, free from dispute, non contradictory, and set forth in the scriptures. Now, for extolling the yoga taught in the philosophy of non-dualism comes a salutation to it. Asparsha yogaha is that yoga which has no sparsha, touch, relationship, with anything at any time. It is of the very nature of Brahman, the jnanam through which the aspirant realizes Brahman is identical with Brahman itself. Thus, jnana yoga, or asparsha yoga, is the surest and most direct method for the realization of the highest truth. As a matter of fact, there is a contradiction involved in this word asparsha yoga. For asparsha, meaning freedom from relation, indicates only non-duality, which by its very nature has no contact with any other thing as any such thing is ever non-existent. The word yoga, meaning connection or contact, implies relation between more than one. Godapada names the path of knowledge as asparsha yoga, as yoga was used in his time also to denote the method for realizing the ultimate truth. To the knowers of Brahman, it is Vainama, indeed so named, that is to say, it is well known as the yoga free from all relationships, and it becomes sarva sattva sukkaha, a bliss to all beings. Some yoga, as for instance austerity, may itself be sorrowful, though it is distinguished as a means leading to extreme happiness. But this one is not of that sort. What then? It is joyful to all beings, because the aim of this yoga is the realization of self, of the nature of existence, knowledge, bliss, absolute. Similarly, in this world, a particular kind of enjoyment of objects may be joyful, but not beneficial. But this one is joyful as well as hitaha, beneficial, since its nature is ever unchanging. The idea of duality and change, implying loss, is at the root of all miseries. This yoga enables us to realize the self, free from all ideas of change. Moreover, it is avivadaha, that in which there is no dispute by embracing two sides, for and against, is free from dispute. Why? because it is, in addition, aviruddhaha, non-contradictory. The non-dualist knows that even those who come to quarrel with him are, in reality, his own self. One who knows everything as his own self does not contradict others, for one cannot contradict his own self. Therefore, he does not look upon anyone as his opponent. The salutation is meant to direct the attention of the students to Asparsha Yoga, this most valuable and easy way of realizing the truth. The yoga of this kind that has been Deshitaha, instructed by the scriptures, come to that, Aham Namami, I make my salutation, I bow down. Namaste. So this chapter is about Asparsha Yoga. Asparsha means 
not contacting, not touching anything else. That means it's completely independent, not relational, like Hatha Yoga is related to the body, Raja Yoga is related to the mind, but Asparsha Yoga is not related to anything. It is of the same quality as Brahman. And Brahman, as was discussed all the way back in the first chapter, in the original mantras of the Mandukya Upanishad, is unrelated to anything. Because nothing else but Brahman exists. So how can you be related to something that's non-existent? See? From the point of view of Brahman, that's what we're talking about. How do things look from the point of view of Brahman? Well, nothing else exists but Brahman. And Brahman knows itself by complete self-awareness. Not by consciousness, because consciousness has an object. And Brahman never becomes an object, even of its own consciousness. So instead, we call it self-awareness because Brahman and Brahman's knowledge of itself are identical. Sat, Chit, Ananda. The fact that Brahman's existence is unlimited and boundless, with no divisions, no parts, means that Brahman can't become an object. Therefore, Brahman's consciousness, chit, is automatic knowledge, complete knowledge of its own self. And this gives rise to ananda. Huh? They're all one thing. Sat, chit, ananda are all one thing. It's a package deal. It comes together. Not that Brahman can be divided into these three things, no. But Brahman is the repository of everything which we experience in the world. Nevertheless, the world is unreal. It's maya, that which does not exist. So, Asparsha Yoga is realization of the non-existence of the world. And the key to this realization is understanding that cause and effect are null and void. In fact, they simply don't even exist. So cause and effect are the root of the idea of Maya, that Brahman creates another thing similar to itself, which is called the Saguna Brahman, or Brahman with qualities. But this is impossible, because there is nothing else but Brahman. See? So how can Brahman be related to anything as a cause? It's not related to anything in any way. Period. Absolute. So, this is understanding things from the point of view of Brahman, which is Ajatavada. Ajata means the world is unborn. There is no creation. It never existed. It doesn't exist now, and it will never exist. There is only Brahman, non-dual, boundaryless, heartless, changeless, timeless, Brahman. And this Brahman is identical with Dharma, the Jiva souls. Actually, there's only one soul, and that's Brahman. But because the Jivas appear to be numerous, therefore we refer to them in the plural. But that doesn't mean that's the reality. <laughs> that's only conventional based on our empirical experience. So this chapter will demolish the idea of cause and effect as a means of realizing the Brahman in its completeness. Aum Tat Sat.
ओम शक्ति ओम ओम नमः शिवाय